I'm going to talk once again about spirituality in this age of information. This is part three of uh, my focus on that subject. But today I'm going to be talking about some of the concerns that might come up for people who believe in various organized religions, believe that those religions provide the moral authority, quote unquote, the moral guidelines that we all must have. And they have concerns about anyone who doesn't believe in that same um, source of authority. So those are the things that I'll be talking about today. The name of this show is Living Wisdom, and I'm Patty Paul. The, um, the questions that come up for people who subscribe to various organized religions and those uh, rather strict rules, strict religious tenets, that form the structure of those organized religions. The question that comes to them often is, how can the rest of us possibly live lives that are moral? And that is a word that they use. Um, there's a lot of judgment that goes behind that. So what I want to talk about is perhaps understanding why there is that need, in the past there has been that need, for the rules and, and guidelines for life that have been handed down by higher authorities. And on the other hand, how individuals who don't subscribe to those same beliefs, those same rules, how individuals can find their own moral, quote unquote, direction in life, their own path of living in the most spiritual way. So these are interesting and complex issues, and I'd like to talk about some of them. Um, the old belief system the, that has prevailed for hundreds, if not thousands of years, that there can be but one supreme authority that, like everything else, arose out of the patriarchal mindset that has prevailed, which got twisted then and distorted then into male chauvinism which meant that this highest authority, the singular high authority, is a god, a male energy, not a man. It has nothing to do with gender. We all know that. But this masculine authority figure, this father god, who hands out the rules, whether you believe what's written in the Bible, the Koran, the Torah, any of those other written texts of organized religion, their central highest authority is a Father God figure. To understand, we all participated in the creation of those various belief systems. We've all lived hundreds, thousands of lifetimes. Uh, generally speaking, we've chosen to be female in maybe 50% of those lifetimes. We've chosen to be male in perhaps 50% of the, 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 the other 50% of the lifetimes. Um, we've all participated as part of the hierarchical authority regime in lifetime after lifetime. We've also participated as members of those who gave their power away to the ruling authority, whether it's 
government authority, religious authority. So we've all co-created over the many lifetimes, over the many thousands of years, the realities that we've experienced, that we've shared with each other. And indeed today, we are all co-creating the current reality. The current reality is quite painful for millions and millions of people. The current reality is not expressing the highest level of spirituality in millions and millions of people. The current reality as it is, as it prevails in the world, is not working. When something isn't working, that's when it's time to examine it, to see what needs to be changed, to see first what we can learn from it about ourselves, and then what we can change in ourself. What I'm talking about is taking our power back. Taking our power back as human beings, as individuals, taking our power back as the spiritual beings that each one of us truly is. And each one of us has given our power away. I've written a few things to look at in this regard. The old way of living, the old um, civilizations, the old realities that we've created, as I mentioned, um, are based on singular authority, that there can only be one creator, and it certainly is not you. It certainly is not me, because there is a higher power. Now, originally, going back perhaps six to ten thousand years there were small pockets of civilization that that existed uh, around the world I'll focus on those that existed in Central Europe and archaeological findings beginning in about the 1970s support the information that I'm going to be sharing Going back those six to 10,000 years, if not even earlier than that, there were these small uh, pockets of society that um, lived in harmony, lived in peace. They, each culture had its own spirituality. And it was kind of live and let live. You can believe what you want, just don't tell me how to believe. There are various organized religions that now refer to those as pagan religions. The word pagan means country. These were people who lived far apart out in the broad country, shall we say, of Central Europe, also in the Orient, also in the uh, Middle East and uh, in India who these people worshipped as they chose. It was live and let live. And when organized religion began to come as a consciousness, what had been worshipped as both god and goddess by those um, small pockets of civilization in their own spiritual way, First, as the patriarchal mindset rose, as male domination began to change things, first it was the goddess that they took as the singular authority. For she indeed had been worshipped by the ancient civilizations. Goddess and God had both been worshipped by the ancient civilizations. But as things changed, they took the goddess. 
And then they broke the goddess, which is, shall we say, the, the composite, the ultimate, the highest level of feminine energy, an unconditionally loving goddess, they broke her down into her separate components, divide and conquer. So archaeological findings of some of the later but old, older uh, civilizations showed the fertility goddess and the various goddesses with these little statues that represented these various facets of the one, the whole, that is the highest level of the goddess energy. So for th many hundreds of years, the goddess was worshipped as she was broken down into the various facets. But then as male patriarchy began to spin into male chauvinism, where everything male, everything masculine, had value, and everything feminine, every women and everything considered feminine energy was devalued as being less than male. That's when it got shifted into a god as the singular authority. Organized religion began to set rules and regulations. The Bible first was put into a single text about uh, 400 AD, various written texts, various written documents from earlier uh, religious and religions were gathered together and it was decided by the emperor of the Byzantine Empire that it would be better to have one universal religion. The word Catholic means universal. And so a committee of men gathered these various writings from various sources and edited them, re-edited them, changed, deleted, modified, and came up with a written document that is called the Bible. One of the things they deleted was any reference to the goddess. So the focus, after about the 4th century AD, has been on a singular th authority, a father god figure, who was then endowed with the worst of human qualities, uh, violence, judgment, uh, capriciousness, punishment, um, jealousy, and to enforce this structure, this belief, people were told that if they dared question what was written about this father god, that th they would then be guilty of heresy, blasphemy, um, they would be punished, they would be doomed, they would burn in hell. So for many hundreds of years, people have not been enthusiastic about questioning the written word, quote unquote. Indeed, um, each of us has an unconscious mind, which is a receptacle of all of the memories, all of the emotions, all of the beliefs that prevailed in our many, many lifetimes. And so many of us have memories of burnings on the cross and um, torture and having our lands taken away and being punished for believing other than whatever the uh, prevailing religious authority said we must believe. 
that hierarchical structure based on a singular authority is a structure, a reality of domination. Domination, control, struggle, fear, pain. Not in the highest good for humanity. It truly is not. It has not been in the highest good for humanity. For, but for many of us, this was all we knew. This was the only information we had was what came from the prevailing religions, the prevailing written texts. But in this new information age, there's new information about spirituality, new information about the more, the higher levels of spirituality. The new information supports a world not based on domination, but a world based on dominion. That's where each of us, as the individuals we are, exists in our own right, on our own spiritual path, with our own identity, personality, beliefs, emotions. And we respect everyone else who has their own separate identity. And in a world of dominion, we exist as part of the oneness of individuals. A higher truth, a higher truth than there can be but one singular authority, a higher truth is that there is a balance and harmony the actual creators of all that is an unconditionally loving goddess and God who co-created all that is who co-created each of us and they are a part of each of us. We each have a soul. That is our connection to the goddess. We each have a spirit. That is the, our connection to God. And the spirit is our aliveness, our intellect, that uh, energy of aliveness. The soul is the depth of beauty, compassion, depth of feeling, um, the emotional side of ourself and we need both spirit and soul to be integrated within us to be in our s highest shall we say spiritual resonance and as we take our power back each in our own way take our power back to all of the hierarchical authorities that we've given it to over the lifetime we're in and the many lifetimes we've lived. As we take our power back and find out that we also have that spark of God, that resonance of the goddess within us, then we can see that we have the permission and authority within ourselves to create any reality that we choose. We do indeed create our own reality, whether we want to recognize that or not, whether we want to take responsibility for it or not. Those who have given their power away, and we all have done that in our various ways, are actually wanting someone with more authority, with more power, to do it for us, to take care of us, to be a parent to us. We certainly created a father God who was supposed to do that for us. And 
as we live our current life, we find all kinds of authorities to give our power away. And in that way, we remain uh, what could be seen as a spiritual child. But part of this wonderful spiritual evolution that we're on is to become a spiritual adult. And we do that by taking our power back and by understanding that we have the power to co-create our reality with goddess and God and the various higher levels of our own consciousness. And then in that way of being in dominion by allowing the help to come in and help us create what we want to guide us and to be open to be, re be receiving love that we heretofore shut out. We felt we had to earn love from the singular authority. We thought we had to twist and bend ourselves to suit some higher authority who would then approve of us and then maybe give us love. In this other reality of dominion, we can just open up to receiving the love that already exists for us. It's an unconditional love, much like the love that a parent has for their child. A love that doesn't require any reason. A parent who is a loving person who isn't to damage themselves, a parent just loves their child for no reason at all. In that same way, the unconditionally loving God who exist as creators of all that is in that higher truth already love each and every one of us. They already know our own names they know who we are personally. So open to receiving that level of love and to start expressing our own compassion for ourselves and for others rather than judging other people who may be caught up in this reality of domination rather than judging them and feeling superior or if you're part of the traditional religious belief system, rather than feeling superior to those who don't also believe as you do, have compassion, have love. This helps us express ourselves at a higher level of our own spirituality. Now there are guidelines beyond the strict rules and regulations that we have gotten from organized religion. The suggestion, the guideline, for instance, that's offered by goddess and God is do what thou will with harm to none. Do what thou will with harm to none. And then for each one of us to find principles to live by that are in our highest good with harm to none. For instance, choosing total honesty as one of the lofty goals and then living your life each day in a way that brings you toward that lofty goal. Another principle, another lofty goal that you might set for yourself as a guideline in lieu of what other uh, rules have been that have been given to you is for yourself to seek unconditional love. To be able to love yourself no matter what mistakes you make, to forgive yourself and to love others, forgive them 
have compassion. So there are goals that we can set for ourselves that are in our own highest good that help us take our power back, help us be our own authority on our own spiritual path. I wrote a book called A New Spirituality Beyond Religion that more deeply explores some of the topics that I've talked about today that gives more detail. My book is available in the library and other places. But I mainly encourage each person to do further exploration on their own path. Take your own power back make life a spiritual adventure. Um, be like a child, open to the wonder, but live your life more fully as a spiritual adult. I thank you for your attention today, and I say goodbye until the next time. <laughs>